Okay. It's like this, guys. So, there's no... You look at the default Rails thing, and Rails doesn't give you a nice jump, React example, actually. Hello world, it create a hello constant function. So then you can do this, hello props. It's a constant function, right? That takes one argument. So then in props here, you can actually pass in name is React, right? Friend is no JSON. Something like that. That's the magic. It, line 20 is similar to line 32 there. Okay. That's how it works. This is props. These are not changed. Props, they don't change. So what the parent pass into the child is in the props. Make sense? So this is one way to do it. Another way you can just do a function, you know, hello, props, blah, and it works just the same as this guy. So now down here, you can just do return, and you will ret return like this. Hello world, you know, props.name, right? Mm -hmm. The same. One difference. Why is there no return word in here? There's another syntax in JavaScript. Is this, you see this curly? It's like one line. If you write, if you write cons hello props, okay, take one argument, right? You can also do this, right? The same. Props, take one argument, and then curly braces, then you need a return statement. Uh, if you don't have, if you only have one thing, no need return statement, you can cheat by doing the curly, uh -huh. the, the, the parentheses. Make sense? So now, now know everything that I know now. Can let's write some component together, right? Everything now, all of this, I don't need. As simple as this, I need a hello thing that display. Right now, if I save this, right? Whoops, sorry. Save. Auto load. There's nothing. So what is this? Uh, I'm trying thing. Home try, like this. Remember. So I can also say, you know, document find by ID and then do, uh, I haven't saved this file by the way, it's still this, I'm trying. Okay, what this does is append everything to the inside, right? I can also do, remember, document dot, maybe let's do that, document, you know, this is ID root, right? Or actually like this, root, and then instead of adding at the end, so we change that later. Let's create that constant hello function. And then what? Uh, hello equals function, take a props and then blah blah. So you, then you can return. Re let's just do something here. Return div hello world. Right? Save. Hello world. And then you can start styling it if you want. So, but what we what do we know so far? We know that it's a function. Uh, a DOM element here is a function, right? And there's a thing called props, okay? Unfortunately, this is not good enough. You need props with all the things that don't change, and you have state things that change. So we, remember, we can do the new style, the fancy style, and then you can do this, and then you can get rid of the return, right? These are all the short syntax you should understand. When you write your own function, you should write this way. Class, hello, extend, react dot component, like that. And then you have a render function. And then, let's see. Uh, yes, it's class, class. I'm not sure if it's here. Hold on. Okay, it looks like this. Extend React component. Now, if you want to, to write this only component, then you have to import directly. You can import, like, you know, component. React.component is the same. So some people are like, I don't need to import another component thing in here, then you just do react.component. It's just namespace, okay? So in here, you have a 
thing called a render function. Take it's a function, so you define it like this. Yeah? And then in here you have a return, and then you put it inside these these things. So I'm gonna do h2 hello world. This is a more extensible way, like the, the complete syntax. Every time you create a complicated component, it'll look like this, and you can start building on it. So let's take a look here. I save. Okay. And then, well, there's some problem here. Notice this one doesn't use JavaScript, but whatever. Ah, uh, no, it doesn't use um, semicolon. You can or you don't have to use it if you want. All right. Imagine now your whole page is like that and you can create a component for each thing. Does it make sense? So let's say down here, maybe I have a name input. Yeah? So I have a name input. So what do I call? I even call this name input. It's a component. So I save it. Error development, right? There's a no name input. Okay, first you need to wrap it in the one for one element so you cannot have two elements in that. So the root, it has to be one, right? Does it make sense? I have to wrap it in a div. Make sense? Yeah. Because I, have, I cannot have two. Return have to do one. And then you like, look at the error. Name input is not defined. Fine. Create class name input. What is it? Extends react.component your text editor can auto complete all of this uh -huh. and then you can render return this right uh, by the way let me send okay let's um, in here so let's let's return an input thing right uh, input type what text and then maybe a prop yeah so like name yeah and then what? Value. Like value, so maybe hello for now. Yeah. yeah? Okay, maybe David, yeah? Hello, hello. Okay, so if I do that, what happened? Oh, gosh. Render is, uh, return, return. You just, you know, it should be right. render. Right? Again, never have to refresh. All right, that's cool. Wait, where's David? Yeah, where's David? Oh, where's David? Yeah, value, right? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. All right. What's next? What if I change in here? So maybe I have another component in here. This is the easier way. Div in here first, okay? So there's a label or just another div, a span, right? Uh, div in here, I will display my this, my property this dot props dot maybe name is that okay True. props where do the props come from yeah, it now if you save it it will complain right where is prop right and also this props dot name so I, I pass in up here name is David copy fill or something right Davidson right all right so I have Davidson you see it passed as a prop up down to here and you can also make the same thing up here, right? This name. Right? Okay. So, but what you want is if I change this Davidson, right now it cannot change. Because React said, hey man, I mean, you bind this value here. If it changed, I need to know to do what to do, right? This constant is, this, uh, this, this element is constant. It's immutable, you can change it. So then they say, please add an on change handler. No problem. So I say on change is I have a function called on change handler. So I just maybe do like this, right? Handler. Yeah? So can maybe we, like handle change. Is that okay? Can, and we, use, can we use it as the state that you said? Yeah, so that's we will get there. So I say handle change. Let's get rid of this error. And it say, well, handle change is not defined. No problem, let's define in this class. Function, right? You can also just name it like, you know, constant function handle change. So what does it take? Maybe, you know, handle change is a function. So you use the new JavaScript style, remember? It's a function. 
yeah so now I can do constant uh, uh, changing and I save it uh oh why uh, oops uh oh hello change sort of a syntax problem and the change is not defined I'm stupid what is happening? Oh! Yeah, oh no mm. 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 okay let's cheat a little here where's my function? I can do it outside though I'm not sure what's going on it's I think well you sort of have to do set of value. Some of the things I type is React Native stuff, so it's it's a bit funny. Unexpected. So within this construct uh hmm. Handle change. Oh no. I it was just working just now. Function. Where's my function? Component. It's like this. You can handle yeah. Well, I will need to do yeah. So in here if you only call handle change, it only check within this this function, render function. Then you can you have to define that func handle change. So here, I probably have to do with this dot handle change. Yo, no error. So when when what's happening? State. I cannot change the state, right? I mm -hmm. know uh, a prop. So I'm gonna call a state. So here, I'm going to set state, and you ne need to do it in a constructor. And remember, name input take an argument called props. So it's in a constructor props. You follow like hey uh, because it inherit from components so component need to call component props so okay that's the default stuff next thing you can say my state is a bunch of stuff in here my state will be my uh, name is this dot state uh, no dot props dot name does it make sense convert my props to my state state right. all right so now down here instead of this dot props I say this dot state uh. This dot state, everything is the same, right? So then handle change. What happens? Maybe I can handle. Maybe uh, maybe there's a value. Um, maybe value in here, and a chart. I don't know. Huh? Let's see. If I type, you see changing, and then it pass in this uh, event, yeah, this yeah. proxy thing. Actually. It's actually an argument that it's a function. You pass in a function here, so you can actually say value. You pass handle change, value. Hey, so I'm not sure why this should be the same though. Uh, why is the value weird? Okay, it will be the same. So I'm just explaining this is the same stuff. Yeah, proxy, let's see. Oh my god, this is different from uh, my React Native stuff. Okay, then you like, I go down here, change handle events, change um, and the click. So this is an event, on click is an event, on change, then you react, where is it? React on change. Form. Another problem with this uh, is that oh, you can do yeah this text dot value. You can do that component dot value. But so on change here handle change event target. So it's same as jQuery I guess. So this actually pass in event and down here I can keep it. The short version. Do you see the short version? The long version? 
right? This is a short version. If you pass in the function name, so this is event. And I, let me see if this word event it always what dot target dot value. Let's see, huh? Hey, you see this Davidson S, and then it returned back to the old one because this component cannot be changed. So when here I say this dot set state, you need to use set state. And then you say name now is event.target.value. Okay? So refresh. There's no need to refresh, but when you do this, then uh, set state. Okay. This is another crazy thing. <laughs> this is the wrong list. It's not the one in this component. So I have to bind. Okay. It's either you can you have to pass in the value here and you bind with the this from the parent or you define this function as the double arrow function. Remember your double arrow thing? Double arrow event like that. When you do this, then the word this is from the outside. Unfortunately, I'm not for some reason this is the newer JavaScript syntax that's not supported. So I'm going to do the uh, crazy way which is find this uh, you guys see this yeah that's so cool right so this is is refresh and create a new component and one more thing you guys have to check is this well I remember the the, the Dom thing I'm going to show that you see react data root everything's under this root all right look at this thing on the left here okay i make changes it only change in these guys hmm. it can do virtual diff it only change in these two places it doesn't touch any html in other places it just parse it into a tree <coughs> change and then merge that it knows how to diff it so it's called dom diffing hmm. yeah so it's it's you know normally if you use jQuery, this will happen. Remember jQuery, you will render the whole thing, mm -hmm. and then let's say if you render this whole thing, but you render the parent, then as you type, the parent refresh and you can't type anymore. It erases. it erases. You have that problem with some of your animation, right? It run it, and then it affects your other things. You may not you want, may still want to click it. So this changed other stuff. You can call on the parent. It only changed the little thing. So. It doesn't affect anything you do. That's why it's powerful. Uh, you can another chat when you see this. It's very easy. From so now, like you, you can go follow the React, uh, you know, a tutorial to create a to-do list, uh, create a movie DB app, you know. Uh, how can we uh, add book chat or something to this? Because. Uh, Mm -hmm. So remember my uh, layout. That's a good question, right? I already have this as layout false. I can turn off this layout false, and then when you run this, it's just at the bottom here. But now you have the whole page. It's already with some, all the bootstrap and everything included. Yeah, I mean I have jQuery now because I have it in the whole you know, loaded in the page. So what you can do is here in document DOM here. You want to use the Rails uses is not the best way. You want to use the React way, which is just this. Render next to this element. Get element ID by root. So I can just do this, right? Uh, look, one last thing here, right? If I do this by root, what happened? It changed inside this template because you have a root. Root here, so don't don't do an h1 root, just diff root. That's it, right? And nothing, you don't need any text in here. So, right, because you change the this one, then it doesn't auto load. But you see now, everything in here is just injected right inside the page, and you can carry this file and inject in different places. These are your components; they are reusable. Yes. Yeah, and here's the cool thing when you learn React, everything can be done on code pen, so you don't have to worry about the Rails part, everything is just JavaScript. So they say try it on code pen. You can click here 
and it's all it's all learnable with this JavaScript and HTML. So you can see how this guy does it. Hello world and print the time. Easy. This is a tick component and it just refreshed the tick component by calling tick again. And the component, when you inspect it, it's the same principle. When you remember when you inspect it, it will only change the seconds. Right? You see it in there? Yeah. It never changed anything else. That's awesome. So now you can go here and learn again. What what is this magic, right? React like well, it's just a function that takes props, but because you don't have any props, so this is empty, and you just return, uh, you know, well, in this case, sorry, the 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 element here, right? It takes no argument. It just returns the hello world and blah. Yeah. But you have this tick thing that just render every time, just render by replacing the root. But this is a quick way to learn it. Eventually, you get to this uh, full class. This one, you always write like this, and then you learn some extra event. The component did mount, component will unmount. Like you know, when the component is run, so it, it did mount the first time the component is created. This will run. Component did mount. If you take the iOS class, it's very similar to uh, view did load. Can okay, I use this with a uh, real variable? Then you have to uh, pass in, you can pass in the Rails variable as a data attribute in here. The props, remember? So technically, you, know, you can pass in more stuff, right? And you can use jQuery to get some data. And then, so I would, for example, pass in the, it as uh, data, blah, data is just a convention. You can pass in as any HTML attributes. And then in line 48, right, 47 here, parse that get that element. Do you know what, what I mean? So let's say username, right? So maybe username is Harley, right? So what happened here is you can get this document by ID here as a root, right? Like this. And in jQuery, uh, so username now is, you can pass this, this thing. So root dot, uh, you know, this is root dot, uh, what's that? inner HTML oh no that's not uh, in jQuery this is like attribute username right but in this I'm not sure get get attribute for something so let's 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 try it uh, let's try it here for now you can still do like root and then you pass in root here right make sense and then down here, I say, well, actually, var root, uh, I need to define it, constant root. Okay, so now I have this, uh, let's say if I have root is document get element by ID, uh, root here. And I have this, oh, where's my name though? Uh, username Harley, I need to save it. Let's do it one more time. This guy, so now I root root dot get attribute, you see? Yeah, see. Yeah. Uh, you just learn the, you know, if not, just use jQuery, right? I think we have jQuery anyway. But I'm just trying to give you an example. You see that? So now I can do this over here, Jason, and then maybe friend, uh, hello name. Uh, let's name, name here is your username, right? So maybe... What's a good way to do it? Is it root dot get attribute username? And then in here, when you first start, uh, not props name, but props, is it name? Hello, and then go to hello, name input. And then down here is this dot props dot name, right? Harley. Why? Harley go from outside here, go to the hello element down here, right? And then after go to the hello, it go to the hello, which is the parent. Parent pass into the child name input. Um, uh, yes. And if uh, in the database, your username is Candy, that's the web Candy. I mean, unless you do WebSocket or something, there's no way the real can actually understand it. <laughs> right? Yeah, you can send a WebSocket, broadcast something, and, and broadcast a JavaScript function. 
You can broadcast maybe like, you know, um, not sure uh, how, I haven't used it before. WebSocket, like maybe change the value in here, but I haven't used it before, so I don't know. But technically, I think if you make it change, it will work. Okay, sorry to keep you. Hope that was uh, fun. Thank you. Let's take a picture.